going to make a point clear about what the world of legal in birth registration means by the word birth. Okay, well, the word birth is only referring to the surname. That's their key uh, focus, and that's why they even underline it, not just as an error to an extent on the birth, on the statement record, but it's, uh, it's because they're, again, inducing and bringing someone into a legal contract as a minor, which they couldn't be, so we already know that citizenship in itself is make-believe. But we're, we're going into the understanding what do they mean by birth, so I want you to understand that. When you do do a little bit of research, you can go on the net and look up word birth, you'll see what I'm talking about. It'll mainly point at the surname. So um, we're gonna go into the Ontario Vital Statistics Act. Of course, I'm using this one because that's the one in the area where I uh, basically woke up and started my due diligence. Uh, and so therefore, to uh, see the other side, I had to know what was going on. I went into the Vital Statistics Act, section 15, and it's under the subheading, adding forename to birth registration. Interesting title there. It says adding a forename to a birth registration. So it means as a birth registration has already occurred, and then for whatever reason, a forename or a given name uh, was not placed on there. So we're going to read section 15. It says, if a child's birth was registered under this act or a predecessor of it, and the child was not given a forename, it said the person with lawful custody of the child or the child, if he or she has attained the age of 18, we know that is age of election in the legal world, may elect in the prescribed manner to add a forename to the birth registration. Where a person elects under subsection one, the Registrar General shall note the addition of the forename on the birth registration and issue a birth certificate to the person on payment of the required fee. Now, immediately when you start moving down that, you're already paying a fee just to get in. See, it's interesting you have to actually pay to be in the legal system. So we wanna focus on what was said there Let's just take into account, as we did on a previous video, what were they obligated to place down on the birth record if the parents were already in the legal contract with the state. So if they're act, acting as in, in the adultery part, above age 18 and going forward, and then they have children, and they're gonna add their issues, is Sue's into it, because now you can only sue in that name, in that surname, well, they're required only by law to put in the surname of that child. The given name would be up to the child to place in when he reaches age of election. So if a child had not elected to do that, he would not be in the legal system with a birth certificate, which would imply he is part of a collective society that's operating in legal, legal debt. So we're going to read the uh, definition of election. So just bear with me. I'm just going to pull a book forward here. And please forgive me for the state of this book because it appears they didn't expect anybody to ever read these law dictionaries. By the time I use them for any period of time, they fall apart. So I think they're just meant for decorations in the lawyer's offices because I don't only really think they read them. And funny enough, I did ask a lawyer one time with all the books behind him, I said, did you read those? And he says, no, just there for decoration. So at least he was being honest in that manner. So here's uh, the definition of election in the Canadian Law Dictionary. It says, election, making a choice. Pretty simple. Then it says, in the context of choosing judicial re review or appeal after having accepted an award, the essence of the doctrine of election is that a person is properly precluded from exercising a right, we read that under the Civil Code of Quebec, that a child could exercise a right to use the name that was in the registration. So it says, is properly precluded from exercising a right that is fundamentally inconsistent with another right, 
if he has consciously and unequivocally exercised the latter. In other words, one cannot have one's cake and eat it too, or one cannot blow hot and cold. Now remember, God said that if you were lukewarm, you're neither hot nor cold, he'd spit you out of his mouth. So when you've gone down the legal journey, so we're using the reference of the child, that baby was not registered, placing the given name in there so that he could obtain a birth certificate, He'd be in a position, when he chooses or elects to enter into the legal, he'd be walking into the legal obligations. So we do not want to misunderstand that no one was forced into this. The only thing that Caesar required that would have put a fine on the parents for not filing the registration of the birth was only based on the surname as the birth name. That is it. They had to pick one or the other. But they could never have been fined for not putting a given name in that record. So, is there a choice? Did we elect into the legal? Were we let into the legal and then continued after 18 to act in it? Did we have an opportunity to make another choice? Let's go down those subject matters because we know most of us have just already acted upon what our parents directed us to do.